2023 is in the bag, so we're going to take a look at my top 10. There are only a couple rules that I set for myself for my top 10 this year. First one was if I had two games in the same franchise, I had to pick one if I like both of them. The second one was if it's a game that I already have played, I cannot add it to the top 10 because I want to make it a fresh experience. And it didn't have to be a game from 2023. It could be a game in my backlog or a game that was offered on like Game Pass or PS Plus. So let's dive right in. So starting off at number 10, the first game is Arcade Paradise. This is a little indie game that I didn't know what to expect about it. It's kind of like a simulator meets uh, a narrative game where you are a woman who finds out that her mother has passed away and you have a little arcade in the back, but it's only like a couple machines. And so you decide to make a quick buck by upgrading everything in the back. And then it just kind of spirals out of whack, but in a good way. And you're like, well, this little laundry mat's not working very well. I think my mom would want me to have more than just that. So you decide you're going to just upgrade it and keep going. And then eventually your arcade is now almost half or more than half of the laundry mat. And you have the dilemma of, well, now I have to figure out what I want to do. Do I want to keep it a laundry mat or do I want to make an arcade? Definitely recommend this game. It's a game where it can be tedious at times, but I enjoy the games like that. So highly recommend this. Definitely try it out. Bye. Number nine is a game that I streamed and had a blast with. This is a short little indie game called A Short Hike. This game is you are a little tiny creature who is trying to hike up the mountain because you want to call your family your mom and you want to let her know that you're okay. But your aunt is like, well, there's no cell service over here. So you're going to have to go through and you're going to have to just take a little quick hike up to the mountain and then get done. But along the way, you find out that you need to upgrade to be able to fly up. So you have to get your little self as far as you can up the mountain. But what I loved about it was it was a game that you could play in one sitting. And not only that, it was a game that <laughs> had little Easter eggs here and there and a little fun, kind of like Zelda where you didn't know what you're going to get until you got to a certain point. And then I love the puzzle solving element. It wasn't too difficult to where you're like, oh crap, here we go. I don't know what I'm going to do. Am I going to get through this? I enjoyed it. I loved when the little bird got to the top of the mountain. The reaction was so sweet. Definitely try this one out. Hey! At number eight is Silent Hill Shattered Memories. This game, I totally missed out on when it first released on the Wii and I was kind of not sure what kind of game this was. Um, I did not realize at the time that it was a remake of Silent Hill 1. I would have picked it up day one if I had known that, but I think it kind of missed the mark for me because I really thought it was another game altogether, a Western game. And so I kind of was like, oh great, another Western. If you are a Silent Hill fan, you know Western style games from the Silent Hill franchise have been not great. And when I got this game, I enjoyed it. I loved that they took elements of psychology and threw it into the mix. So whatever you said or answered for your psychology treatment part, which kind of sounds weird when you say it out loud, but it's actually really cool because they take your stuff that you do and add it to the game. So you can have multiple things happen to you in the game and you're not sure where to go with this. But if you've played Silent Hill 1, you know the ending of the game, but there is a twist to it, which I kind of think everybody would have known the twist anyway, because when you are in Silent Hill, you're kind of in limbo. So definitely try this out if you have not. Uh, I know the Wii and PS2 version is very expensive, so pick it up on the PSP. It's not that expensive. I mean, yes, you might have to import it like I did, but worth your time. Now at number seven was a game that I was really hyped for when I heard about it, and that is Kirby and the Forgotten Land. Kirby and the Forgotten Land adds new powers to the mix. It's more of an open world game. I mean, it's not as open world as most of the games, but it's a lot less linear than you would have any of the other Kirby games I've ever played. I enjoyed this game because they added some weird stuff. <laughs> like, you see Kirby inhale a vending machine? and then a car, and then you use those elements to the environment, and you have to get the Waddle Dees out of 
of course, the bad guy. And I enjoyed this one. I had a good time with it. I streamed it and what I found funny was whatever you are playing, you're going to be one of those types of games where you're going to be like, did I really just do that? But it still was classic enough to know for all the Kirby fans who have played the original games all the way up to the now that it's still got the classic feel to it. So I enjoyed this one. Definitely try this one out for sure. At number six is a game that I also streamed like Short Hike, and that is The Takeover. This is a beat-em-up game that had a lot of 90s nostalgia into it, and it had multiple endings, and it had three classic characters that you always can find in any beat-em-up from the 90s. There was your tank character, your fast character, and the one in the middle that was if you just wanted to be in the middle. You didn't know if you were going to be tanky or fast, you could have a little bit of both. And I enjoyed it to where you got to see things you're like, oh, this is kind of like RC. This is kind of like Streets of Rage, kind of like meeting with a final fight and different things like that. So if you like comic-y style, art style, you will enjoy this. And the bosses had patterns and all the characters had patterns that were easy to pick up if you know beat-em-ups. But not also to where you're going to be like, oh crap, I have a new player. I don't know if they're going to like this. I think even a new player will like this because there's moments where you're like, oh, they can, they can handle this. They can learn it. If they pick up patterns for other games, they can pick up this game and have no problem. And I enjoyed the chat because they helped me pick an ending and I got a bad ending. But at the end, even the bad ending was funny. It was like kind of like an 80s movie where you're like, oh crap. Is this person going to be a villain now because of what I chose? And I hope they make a sequel to this because I would love to see what they do with it next. Bye. Now, at number five is a game that I debated between because I had played and beat two Pokemon games, but I like this one more, and that is Pokemon Legends Arceus. And now, I understand that a lot of people who play Pokemon games are not liking this one because it's more open world, it's more gathering stuff, it's more kind of like... You have to go to this area, like Animal Crossing. You have to be there at this time, at this day. It has to be raining to be able to pick up this Pokemon. And the reason I liked it was because it was chill. So I did get frustrated, I will admit, on some of the harder Pokemon to pick up. But again, you just trade with somebody if you're that upset with this Pokemon. Be like, hey, have you picked this one up yet? Okay, can I trade with you? So I like the added system of they kept the trade in there so you can be able to be like, okay, I have this one, you have that one, let's do this. So you can have buddies help you out. And if you don't have a buddy, you don't have to worry about it. You can just play at your own pace. And I like the story element. You are a person who's sucked into the vortex from another world and you're dropped into this world. And you have to help them figure out what's going on. And they are kind of like worried about you, but you're like, well, I've seen this happen. I'm from a different world and I know how to fight and keep Pokemon, so I will help you out. I like the short pace where you could pick it up and play it for an hour or you can play it for 10 hours. There is no time limit on this game. It's not like you feel like you didn't do anything. You can literally play it for 15 minutes, kind of like Animal Crossing, and you felt like you got somewhere. You can at least get some Pokemon, you can build them up, you can level them up, you can do what you need to do. So. Definitely get this one for sure. Now I know it, there's gonna be people that are like, no, this one shouldn't have made the list. It will for me. Anytime there's a game that's kind of like Animal Crossing meets Pokemon, they need to do this and make another sequel. <gasps> At number four is Spider-Man Miles Morales. Now I had wait to play Spider-Man Miles Morales because I wanted to play a couple shorter games and I really enjoyed Spider-Man. So I wanted to see where they took the story and I really enjoyed the story. You are Miles and you are in a family who is finding out that somebody is bad and is going to attack you. And through the time that you see your father go in and have a ceremony to be celebrated, whatever he won, you find out that they were attacked and bombed and you try to help and stop whatever was going on. But sadly, you don't stop them in time. And... Through the time, you find out that your friend Peter is also a Spider-Man and you're like, well, now I got to learn all this. And the one thing I enjoyed about this version was he's not great at swinging. He's not great at everything. So you have to learn and build yourself up. 
and so you can have a little bit harder time getting around but I, I enjoyed that part I like that not everybody is great at everything all the time so give me x-men give me more like this I want to see you know rogue when she first started she's not great at her powers she's, everybody is not 100 percent perfect so this is a great game i did like that you could go at your own pace like the other one and i also like that it was shorter than the first game even though i know it's dlc you have moments where you can keep going and 100 percent it if you want to as well but i like that i just played it had a good time with the story and moved on so definitely pick this up or check it out it's on ps plus i don't know how long it's gonna be on ps plus and i hope that they put spider-man 2 on ps plus so i could try that out but i know it's gonna be at least a year for it to come out three. at number three and it's another divisive game that has split the community again and that is legend of zelda tears of the kingdom now it's not number one and i will admit that this is not a perfect game and I didn't expect it to be a perfect game. I didn't expect to be wowed 100%, but that was kind of like Ocarina of Time meets Majora's Mask. It was not a game that I picked up and went, oh, okay, it's in the same engine, it's in the same thing, it's just like Tears of the Kingdom. I went in and I was pleasantly surprised by the depths. I was pleasantly surprised by multiple things that I found through not even knowing that Nintendo did that. And I wanted to be spoil free, just like Breath of the Wild. I went in not knowing what to expect. And I will say Nintendo learned from their mistake on Breath of the Wild. Because in Breath of the Wild, you can literally get off the plateau and go straight to Ganon and beat him <laughs> in like 15 minutes if you want to. If you're really good at it, pick up a few and just crush it. Take the Master Sword, be done, and know where it is and go. But for this one, I will tell you, you can't. In Breath of the Wild, it took me 40 plus hours to finish it. This game took me 70, 75 hours plus to beat it. And that was because if you skip parts of the game, I found this out later because I watched the final battle with if you skip it because somebody wanted to speedrun it. You better be prepared and ready because you will battle every single person, every single creature that you missed or skipped. And I was like, I'm grateful that I played it all the way through because... Uh, for those who don't know, I skipped a lot of the Breath of the Wild. I really did. I didn't want to deal with it. So I was like, mm, I'm going to skip this part. So I literally just did the four beasts, got all I could. I even skipped the Master Sword in Breath of the Wild. But in this one, I got the Master Sword because I realized after the first battle in the castle, I could not beat him. And Phantom Gadam was just kicking my ass. So I literally had to go get the Master Sword. I had to phase out of there, get back, and just accept that I was going to have to go back. And that happened twice with the first battle and the second battle. The second battle, I literally had what I thought was enough for everything. And then I got depleted every time to the final battle with him. And I could not, for the life of me, figure it out. And I had to go back. And the one thing that frustrated me, which I don't know why they did this, they don't let you get out of there. If you go in and you try to fight in battle, you can't. You're out. Like, you have to go load up another save, which it pissed me off. Really, I did. It pissed me off. So just fair warning, if you go to the final battle, be prepared. Level up as much as you can. Get everything ready. And it'll be an easier fight. But I had a good time with this. I enjoyed this. I will say that it's not number one, but it's definitely... A number three for that reason. Now at number two was a classic game reimagined and that is Super Mario Wonder. I was waiting for this game. I saw those the trailers for this and I was so intrigued by it. And I enjoyed it because of the fact that it took your classic 2D feel and it modernized it to where it added new powers. It didn't just copy and paste like the other ones that I've had in the past where you're like, oh, just one new power. This literally gave you two, three new powers. It took elements of Mario Odyssey, gave you kind of like, a, like you could see him and there's this cap and stuff like that. And I really did enjoy it. I enjoyed the elephant. I enjoyed multiple powers. I love that they kept the classics, like uh, the fireball. And I also enjoyed that you got to go through and battle 
and you got Bowser, you still had your classic feel like Kirby where you knew what you're playing. But it was newer to you to where a person who's never played the classic Mario games would jump on this and enjoy it. So you got both worlds loving the game. I had a great time with this. And I love the final battle. Um, see Bowser right here. I love the final battle between Mario and Bowser. It's had a music element to it. So you had to deal with rhythm. Now I understand a lot of people don't like rhythm games and you have to fight with rhythm, but that made it even more better. Like I enjoyed the rhythm. I enjoyed the challenge of you have to hit this button at a certain time. And if you don't, you're screwed. So definitely pick this up. It's worth your time. If you are not, you're like, I'm, I'm debating about it. It's not going to go down in price. It's such a great game. I paid full price for this because I knew that it was going to be something that I was going to want to play. So definitely try this out. Now you're saying to yourself, if Mario is number two, what is number one? Now for my list, Oregon Trail always will be at top of the list whenever they make a new game for Oregon Trail because it's a classic game that I grew up playing in my school and I never got tired of playing this game because it was a challenge every time you played it. No matter if you played it a hundred times, you're never going to have the same outcome and it will always be one of the best games I've ever played in my life. And when they announced it for 2022, I had a blast with it. I enjoyed it. I was like, you got to be joking me. But the one thing I was waiting for was a physical version and sadly they never dropped a physical version for this. So I just picked it up finally because I was like, well, if they're not going to put it out for physical, I'll still play it and enjoy it. And I love that they modernized it. They upgraded the, not just do like a 8-bit fill, they upgraded the graphics. They updated a lot of stuff on there. So a lot of the stuff from back in the day was, mm, was not great. <laughs> so they... Modernized it, fixed it on that element. And I did enjoy that there was different ways that they could leave. So in the original Oregon Trail, no matter what happens, they are on your wagon for sure. They will stay with the wagon no matter what. But in this one, if you make a decision and the character, the character doesn't like it, they could leave and just walk away. So if you keep getting lost, if you keep making a decision that gets the party screwed, they could just all leave. And then you end the game that way because it used to be they all perished or they all just lost the wagon. The wagon fell apart and you couldn't make it or you just ran out of time. Like some of the versions you ran out of time because it was winter so you can't travel anymore because you're screwed. But this one added a third element. If you don't work together as a team, if the team's not liking your decisions, you could lose all the party members and then you have nobody to run the wagon at all. <laughs> so I enjoyed that part even more than just like what they had in the basics. So if you like Oregon Trail, I definitely recommend this version. I liked it way better than the Wii version. The Wii version is just maneuver around, avoid the obstacles. And then there really wasn't any element like it used to be like strategy back in the day. So I'm glad they went back for more of a classic feel for this. But definitely try it out and I hope in the future that they will release a physical version and if they don't I hope that the next game they will do that one but I get it you know with an indie team or smaller team it's kind of hard to get everything with not knowing the base of the players how many people are gonna actually pick it up so we'll see what happens in the future and there you have it everybody there is my top 10 for 2023 let me know what were some your games that were top 10 or let me know in the comments what your top 10 is for 2023. And I hope you all enjoyed this. Let's see what happens in 2024. I'm hoping for more great games and a lot more games that are released physical. But if not, I guess we're going to the digital age. Uh, I mean, I wasn't expecting it that fast, but I guess with Alan Wake 2 hitting it off like that, we're going to see more and more people do this. But thank you for watching. If you're liking the content, Hit the like button before you leave. If you're new, consider watching a couple more videos and giving a sub helps out the channel. And I'll catch you in 2024 and a stream if you watch the streams. Bye, everybody. Linda the Gamer Gal. She's here, she's playing games. Linda the Gamer Gal. 
she's here, she's playing games today.